Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. So welcome to church. A thankfulness. I will look for a reason to be thankful. I will give thanks every day. Always and for everything. I will give thanks. I can only give thanks if my life is focused on God. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, the things that are taking our focus away from you, Lord. The noise that takes our focus away from you. Lord, I will focus back on you because when I focus on you, then I have the ability to give thanks in everything. When busyness and craziness starts causing me to drift, my response will be to put my eyes back on the Lord in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. It is His will that we give thanks. Be thankful in all circumstances For this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father, that we will be in your will and give thanks in every circumstance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. The ability to give thanks is directly, it's directly equated. It's directly from a life that is focused on God. The ability to give thanks in everything is the response of a life that is focused on God. I have been sharing with quite a few people about the fact that this year for us is a year of thanksgiving. And many people have been speaking to me about the fact that it's not easy to give thanks in everything. And maybe we should, you know, when we're in that craziness of something going wrong, how do we give thanks when we are there? When the ingrown toenail is causing so much pain, that all I can do is think of my foot. What does an ingrown toenail make you look at? So we become focused on the ground and we become focused on the ingrown toenail and not on God. You see, the devil doesn't have to get you doing stuff that is devil worship and all that. He doesn't have to do that. He's just got to make sure that you focus on the ingrown toenail. And many of us have got ingrown toenails in our life and we don't even realize it. But we just have this nagging pain in life. That was quite good. Did you? Nagging. None of you responded to that. Praise the Lord. I want to have a life that is filled with gratitude. The only way that I can have a life that's filled with gratitude is if my life is filled with the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit shows me the things that are important. The Holy Spirit will remind me of all the things that God has done for me up to this point. The Holy Spirit is the one who unctions me to be on the correct path. You see, if we are going to be walking on the path that God has for us, we have to be in step with the Holy Spirit. We have to walk circumspectly. We've got to think about the way we walk and what we do. We have to understand that 
God gets upset with us when we moan and groan. Okay, I'm going to say that again. God gets upset with us when we, ma- when we moan and groan. In Numbers 11 verse 1, I'm not going to read the whole scripture, but I'm going to say to you, the Lord's anger ablazed against them. Who was them? It was the Israelites. They were led out of Egypt. I mean, there was something that was phenomenal about that. And when they got to a place that they're going to the promised land, they have seen God's hand, but all they could think about was how good it was in Egypt. What kind of disillusionment was that? They didn't have it good in Egypt. You see, the devil wants you to have this idea that your past troubles were actually not so bad. And if we live in our past troubles and not focus on the victory that God has given us, there are many victories that we have. Many victories. And if we focus on the things that are not okay, then our life becomes a life that expresses things that are not okay. But if I look to the Lord in everything, If I focus on him, if I start realizing the reason I'm here, the reason I'm standing here is because of God. The reason I have something is because of God. The sustenance I have in my life is because of the Lord. The ability to make wealth is because of the Lord. The home that I have is because of the Lord. When we were looking for a house after we had to sell our home, We were looking for a house, and we walked in on, I don't know how many places we saw, and there was one specific place that I really enjoyed. It was right for us. It had all the nooks and crannies that we needed. It had everything that we could walk into. And you know that saying, be still and know that I am God. I looked at Renette, and I said to her, be still. And the, the person that was showing us the house was obviously taken back by this. But he just looked at us. And we were quiet. And all you could hear was cars. There was no stillness. It was crazy. So I said to Renette, perfect house. But not perfect for a home. You see what I'm saying to you? And then we walked into our place that we currently walked. We walked into it, and there were certain things in this. I had certain things that must be there for us to have that house. Renette walked into this house, and there was just sunlight. It was just warm. And she just walked in, and she said, this is my home. It didn't have what... I believed we needed, or let's say, wanted. But God knew what we needed. And the place that we're in doesn't have all the blocks, boxes that I wanted to tick. But when we sit in our garden, even though we're in a complex, we have mentioned this so many times, we sit there, and we're quiet, and it is quiet. For a complex, it's quiet. Every now and again, of course, the neighbor, and it's not the complex neighbor, it's a house next to us, and he's Afrikaans, and he plays modern Afrikaans. I didn't know there was such a beat in modern Afrikaans music, but he has decided not to follow Jesus. He has decided to share his love for Afrikaans beat music with the neighborhood. (laughs) But he only does it on a Thursday, a Friday, and a Saturday. It's amazing. But thank you, Jesus, that greater is he that is in me than he that is the irritation
And this is one of the things that, what are we focusing on? Are we focusing on the irritation or are we focusing on the blessing that God has given us? Everything that we have is from God. Everything that we have. When we lack thanksgiving, when you lack thanksgiving, when I lack thanksgiving, it stops us moving forward. The Israelites had a promised land. All they had to do was walk into the promised land. But they stopped to complain. And the more they complained, the more they stayed in the desert. And one of the most amazing things about that story is everyone, the generation, they stayed in the desert for 40 years. The generation of complainers died so that the rest of the people could go into the promised land. Please, God, that there's no moaners in this church. We don't need a generation to die first before we enter into the promised land. Hallelujah. It's time for us to understand, even though that which I am facing is overwhelming, I need to understand that gratitude is the thing that changes, that shifts my attitude. And the thing that's going to change my life is an attitude of gratitude. When I can look around me and see how amazing God is and see what God has done. When, when we are thankful in every situation that we are in, how do we do that? How do we do that? We have to do this consistently. We have to practice it. You know, before you can achieve something, you have to practice it. Guess what? We have to practice an attitude of thanksgiving so that it becomes part of our lives. That we become so used to looking and seeing how God has blessed us rather than focusing on what we don't have. You see, if we focus what we don't have, then the challenge is... All we see is what we don't have, and we look at somebody else, and we see what they have, and then we come not only moaning about what we don't have, we become jealous of what they have. And we start becoming so focused on what other people have that we don't see what we have. Our hearts become filled with bitterness. And when a heart is filled with bitterness, it changes everything. There's a story of an old farmer, and his, one of his relatives comes and visits him. And the relative that's visiting him is an ungodly man. And they sat down for a meal, and this godly farmer took a moment and started praying and thanking God for what he had. He says amen, and his relative looks at him and says, don't you realize that there's no God anymore? This is the time of enlightenment. There's more information, there's, more, there's no place for that superstition. Why do you thank him? And the farmer said, there is only one person, there is only one thing on this farm that doesn't thank the Lord for what he has and for his meals. And this ungodly man turned around and said, who is this person of enlightenment? And he said to him, it's only the pig that doesn't say thank you for its meal." It's only the pig that doesn't say. Well, you, can, you can dress that as you want to. You can meditate that on for a while. You can think about it. And you can wonder what the story was all about. Or you can recognize that maybe we need to stop misbehaving 
and we need to start behaving as God wants us to behave. Are we a people? Am I a person that is grateful in every situation that I am in? Am I thankful? Can I say this Thessalonians 5 verse 18? Can I take that Thessalonians 5 verse 18, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18, that we have for this year, can I take that scripture and can I make it a scripture that is part of my life? Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. This is God's will that I am thankful. Why? Because I belong to him. A person that doesn't belong to him cannot and will not be thankful in every situation. But because I belong to him, I am thankful in every situation. We need to understand the impact of this thankfulness on a person individually. We are all walking our own walk and relationship with God. But thankfulness in everyone's life, our thankfulness will determine our growth as a child of God. A thankful child of God is a person who is growing in their relationship with God. And we all want to grow in our relationship with God. Every one of us say, say we want to grow in our relationship with him. Paul writes in 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 3, Dear brothers and sisters, we can't help but thank God for you. Now why was Paul thanking God for these people? Because your faith is flourishing. And your love for one another is growing. When God moves amongst people, our faith grows and our love for each other grows. Because my love for you is not determined by what you do. It's not because you olek. It's not because you can bake an amazing chocolate cake. It's because you're a child of God. And because we're children of God, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And whatever the culture says and whatever politically correct says and what all these things says, it doesn't influence us because we are children of the Most High God. We are adopted into the family and we can now say, Abba, Father. We are His and He is ours. Colossians 1 verse 10. And this is a very important part of a child of God who is growing in his relationship with God. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. When I am a child of God and I'm walking in relationship with him and I am pleasing him, what is happening? I am increasing in the knowledge of God. Verse 11 from Colossians 1, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long-suffering with joy. Verse 12, give thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. The reason why I'm thankful is not because of what I have, but because I am qualified to partake in an inheritance that has been purchased for you and for me at the cross. I have been redeemed. And I step into that. I want to read it to you from the New Living Translation. It says this. Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord. And your life will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while, you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. Verse 11. We also pray that you will be strengthened 
with all his glorious power, so you will have all the endurance, long suffering, and patience you may need. May you be filled with joy. How, how, how wonderful is that? May you be filled with joy. Always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in his inheritance that belongs to his people who lives in the light. Where do you live? Am I living in this light? You know, when I, when I am living in the light and I'm growing in this relationship, I'm increasing in knowledge. I am getting to a place that I'm getting to know God better. I study it, and as I'm getting to know God better, the only thing I can do is I can give thanks to Him. I give thanks to the Father. Because as I get to know Him, I start recognizing how ungrateful I have been in my life. And when I see that, all I can do is repent. You see, the closer you get to God, the more you recognize in your own life, I must repent. I've got to stop allowing these things to take control of my life. I need to be thankful because you know what? God is busy with me. A Christian that is growing is a person that is thankful. A person that is thankful is growing in their relationship with God. A person that is growing in their relationship with God is a person that is a giving person. Now, the moment we mention something about giving, everybody first, money. As you know, we do not preach about money and money and money in this church. What I do preach about is, are you a person of gra that has the gift of gratitude? Am I grateful for what God has done in my life? You see, because God has blessed me, not to keep the blessing for myself. That was never God's intention. When God spoke to Abraham, God said to Abraham, I will bless you. I will make you, man, you're going to be the father of many nations. You're going to have kids like you cannot believe. But I'm going to bless you so that you will be a blessing to others. Two years ago, we spent quite a bit of time on that. Am I blessed to be a blessing? Do I realize that what I have is not to be something that I hold on to, but what I have, I have more than enough to share with the people around me. And when I am grateful for what God has done in my life, the first thing I want to do is to share with the people around me. And what I'm sharing with them is the life that God has given me. It's not, I'm giving money to everybody. I am giving stuff to any. If you want to give stuff and money to somebody, you're most welcome to give it to the ministry. It's fine. But you know what's more important than the stuff that you want to give? Is your heart. You see, God's not interested in what you give. God's interested in how you give. God is interested in your heart. God's not interested in the fact that you have such a lot and you can give because you've got a lot. God is interested in, in your heart, do you give to people? You give time. You give love. You share of yourself with people. A giving Christian is someone who has the light of God in their life and they take that light and they share it with the people around them. When you are walking around in a business environment where you have to be careful what you say about your religion, God is very awesome when it comes to this. He says, let your light so shine before men that in the things that you do, his name will be glorified. When people look at you, they will know that you are a child of God because you are not a person that's a gimme. Gimme, gimme, my name is Jimmy. You've heard me say that a lot. And there are so many people in this world today, and there's a lot of young people in this world today, 
who believed, believes they are entitled to. You are entitled to nothing. You are only entitled to the air that you breathe that's given to you, you by God so that you have life. And now what are you going to do with that life that has been given to you by God to glorify Him? Our ministry, we've just come through our 15 years in being in this ministry. This ministry has been able to be sustained in spite of of very little income. This ministry has been able to support and look after missionaries. We have given into the work of missionaries. We have been part of the Gideon's ministry of sharing Bibles. When we hear what they are doing in different countries where the Bibles were sponsored from here, from South Africa, and this ministry gives into that ministry, so we part of what they are doing. And it's a wonderful thing to know. Can I share something with you? In this Ferndale, we are one of the biggest ministries sowing into the Gideons. This week coming, we're going to be handing out Bibles to the grade eights at Ferndale High. This church sponsored all the Bibles that will be handed out at Ferndale. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand. How amazing is God's provision? Now this, you are part of a child getting a Bible and that Bible impacting their life down the road. There's been people that have taken the Bibles that we've given to in the rear. They've taken it and they've torn pages and they've smoked it. There's a testimony of a guy that had a Bible and this was given to him and he smoked Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But when he got to John, John smoked him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God's word doesn't return void. And we have to understand what God is saying to each and every one of us. A life of gratitude. Because of this word. This word changed my life. This word showed me how to be a husband to Renette. This word showed me how to be a father to my kids. I did not have an example. I did not have a mentor in my life. This is what showed me how. And this was my mentor. I didn't realize that God's whole thing is don't walk alone. Everything that I had done in my life was do it on your own. And when God started really working in me, then I started understanding how important fellowship is with each other. Because as we speak to one another, we are encouraging each other. When was the last time that you just sat with somebody and just glorified God and testified to how amazing God has been in your life? And that is an encouragement to somebody else. But we will rather moan. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Why do we have an abundance? For every good work. In the New Living Translation, 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8, And God will generously provide all you need. The Bible doesn't say, and God will generously provide all you want. It says all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. I am blessed 
to be a blessing. You can read the whole story of Abraham in Genesis 12, verse 2 onwards, where, he, where God says to him, you are blessed to be a blessing. You can read it there. But I want to say to you, are we a people that appreciates God? Do we remember that God loves a cheerful giver? That's not money. God wants you to give of yourself to him. If you are giving yourself to him and you are murmuring in the process, you're going to be stuck in the desert. And please, rather repent, stop murmuring, come to him and watch God bless you into the promised land. But one of the things we have to remember, the Old Testament teaches us what God is all about in the New Testament. So they were led to the promised land. And then they moaned and groaned. But then that generation died. And the next generation that went into the promised land, God said, this is your land. I have given it to you. What did they have to do? They had to fight. They had to make a life. They had giants coming at them, and they had to kill them. They had to go into a place and fight the foreigners that were in this place. Foreigners to them, people that were living there. God gave the land to them. But he that was given the land to had to go in and fight. God said, when you fight, I will give you the victory. Are you listening to me? We don't want to fight in life. We want everything to happen. Just give it to me. Just let me have it. When we start fighting for these things, oh, that's not God's will for my life. It's not God's will that I fight. I have to understand Colossians 3 verse 17. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Everything that I am doing, everything that I... Thank you, Lord, that this has been given to me and I am empowered by you to be able to subdue it. I am empowered by you to have the victory in this that I'm doing. When God has made a way for you, he's given you the victory, but you've got to start doing the pushing. You've got to pray until something happens. And you've got to step forward because faith without an action is dead. So you step forward and you push and you pray until something happens. And you move and you go and you take back what the devil has stolen from you. And you live because you are empowered by God's grace to be able to be victorious. If I do not recognize that, giving God the glory in all that I'm doing, when I turn around and say, look how amazing I am. I am so, oh, look, look at what I've done. Then the Lord says, oh, you've done it. Then do it by yourself. And what happens then? We soon find ourselves stuck. Oh, I wonder where the Lord is now. But who are you giving glory to for the things that God has done for you? You were giving glory to yourself. You were giving glory. Look at me. Pride and arrogance. Give glory to God for everything that he does in your life. Give glory to God because he is wonderful. So we have a few things that we battle with. But if I'm a child of God that my relationship is growing, I'm a child of God that becomes a giving child of God. I am a child of God that becomes radiant as an ambassador for Christ. When people look at me, they must see that I represent God. When I walk into a place, darkness flees. Not because of me, but because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I love Load shedding is an amazing thing. I take a candle, and it lights up an area. What you must do is let a room be completely dark, 
and take a candle. A candle. Not a torch. A candle. And step into the room that is dark. And be focused. Look at it. How darkness flees. It's like the blackness runs up the wall. Hallelujah. From the mouth of babes. When I walk into a place where people are not of God, the darkness that they represent, that which is not of God, flees. Because I come with the authority and the power of He that created the universe. Amen? Watch how darkness flees when you come with light. We are walking in the light. We do not walk in darkness. And when we walk into darkness, it becomes light. Because light removes darkness. You see, darkness is not a thing. It's not, you can't, darkness is an absence of light. The black thing there in the room is the absence of light. And when light goes in, when you walk in, that which is dark flees. But how close are you to God for this? John 8 verse 12. Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. I am a child of God. Say with me, I am a child of God. Now I want you to search your heart for a moment and then say it again. I am a child of God. I am redeemed. I am purchased by the blood of Jesus. I am a child of light. There is no darkness where there is light. I cannot fellowship with darkness because I am a light bearer. Hallelujah. This is such an important thing for us to understand. I am a person that is filled with light. I am a person that is excited about what God is doing. I'm a person that is going to influence the, the places and the people around me. A light bearer is somebody who impacts the things and the life around them. Are you an influencer? I've heard many people say, yes, they're influencers and they're on YouTube. I am not an influencer on YouTube. I am an influencer because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the light. We're going to come to the table of the Lord. And the table of the Lord is about thanksgiving. So many people that get bound up in religiosity have a concept that this table is something that is very mournful. It is something that is very, uh, I'm going to the table, oh Lord. And now they want to repent before they come to the table. Because somewhere in the Bible they heard somebody say, before you go to the altar, you must check yourself. And then they start quoting scriptures about coming to the altar. So if you are presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple, and you suddenly remember that, something has, that, that someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice there at the altar and go and reconcile with that person. How many times have you heard that scripture being shared coming to the table? Be honest with yourself. It's got nothing to do with the table. 
that scripture says, if I come to the altar with my sacrifice. This is not about your sacrifice. This is about Jesus. As often as you do this, give thanks in remembrance of me. Give thanks in remembrance what he did for me. If you are going to do something for someone, you are bringing a sacrifice to the altar of God. This is the altar. I am coming to God. This is not the altar. Are you listening to me? If you think this is an altar, then you are a religious person. There's no religious people here. Say amen. amen. I take me and I put me on the altar. I present myself as a living sacrifice. When I am doing that, when I realize, my goodness, there's things in my life that are not right, repent and fix it so that you can present yourself as a living sacrifice which is well-pleasing to God. When you're full of non nonsense and you want to present yourself as a sacrifice, you're not presenting a good sacrifice. You're presenting a sacrifice with a lamb that's got a broken leg. We must present our hearts pure to God. So my sacrifice is about me really fixing things with people. It's about me asking God for forgiveness. Then I come to the sac and do the sacrifice for him. Does that make sense? Are you with me on this one? But now we're busy with this. So this is not about your sacrifice. This is about God. This is about the work of the cross. And if I'm going to be a child of God, and I'm going to experience this the way God wants me to experience this. Ephesians 5 verse 20. Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The only way that I can really give thanks to the Father is through what Jesus did. This is a representative, a representation of what Jesus has done. I want to read this from the message, and it's from verse 18. It says, don't drink too much wine. Say amen. amen. It doesn't say don't drink wine. Now, I'm not supposed to highlight that. You are evil if you drink wine. No, that's not in Scripture. If you've got a bit of pain going on, have a little bit of wine to settle the pain. But if you overdo it, then you're missing the point. Okay, don't drink too much wine. Say amen. Okay, when you say amen, you're saying it. And you know who you are. I can just park you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that I gave up drinking and I was delivered from alcoholism 30 years ago. Praise the Lord. I didn't even know the scripture existed. Because then I would have said, I'm sure I can have a little bit. But you can't, when you messed up, you can't have a little bit. You see, I'm a little bit pregnant. Okay, you either are or you aren't. When you messed up and you're dealing with something, you either are or you aren't. Rather be aunt and not auntie. I'm not doing it. Don't drink too much wine. I'm going to get past this at some stage. That cheapens your life. When alcohol is the big thing in your life, your life is cheapened. Don't drink, uh, drink the Spirit of God. Huge drafts of Him. Sing hymns instead of drinking songs. Sing songs from your heart to Christ. Sing praises over everything. Any excuse for a song to God the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We're coming to the table of the Lord today, and I'm coming with such a grateful heart. I am thankful for what God has done in and through this ministry. I'm thankful for what God has done in our lives. I'm thankful for where our kids are. I'm th what are you thankful for? I come to this table, and I've got nothing to be thankful for. Thank you, Lord, that you died on the cross for me so that I can have everlasting life with you. 
Thank you, Lord, that when I come to you, my sin is dealt with. As far as the east is from the west, it is removed from me and I am forgiven and you remember it no more. Hallelujah. So if you are not a person that can say right now, this is what I am specifically thankful for, the thing that I'm thankful for is the work of the cross. Because I can't get myself to heaven. But Jesus brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. That I can become a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And not only did he leave me there, he took me and he put my feet on the rock that is him. That I have a foundation that never moves. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. But all I have to worry about is today. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Trouble. We will have trouble. Every day has got its own trouble. There's enough trouble for today. In today. Don't worry about tomorrow. But thank you, Jesus, that your mercy is new every morning. So I have enough mercy and grace for the trouble that's coming my way today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. This is what we've got to start doing. We've got to see it in God's hand. We are not going to serve you this morning. You are going to serve yourself. When you are ready and you've got the things that you are thanking God for in your head and you give it to him, then you come and serve yourself. You go and sit down and you stay, just have a moment with God. Amen? Are you ready for that this morning? Father, we thank you for this table that represents the work that you did on the cross. When you were seated with your friends, you took the bread and you broke it. And you said, this is my body that is broken for you. Thank you, Lord, that our lives does not have to be filled with brokenness. You took all the brokenness on yourself and you have made it that we can walk healed and whole in Jesus' name. You took the cup and you said, this is the cup of the new covenant. Thank you, Lord, that this covenant is in the blood of Jesus Christ. And that blood covers me. It washes me uh, clean. I no longer have sin dominating my life any longer. Thank you, Father, that the blood of Jesus is the blood of the new covenant. And in that new covenant, I am at peace. I have the shalom peace of God. I am complete in him. And everything I need for life, I have because of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, this morning that you bless this time as we fellowship with you, as we have this moment coming to the table, your table, and enjoying this moment with you. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all say, Amen. Be faithful, you show yourself faithful. To those with integrity, you show integrity. To the pure, you show yourself pure. But to the wicked, you show yourself hostile. You rescue the humble, but you humiliate the proud. You light a lamp for me. The Lord my God lights up my darkness. In your strength, I can crush an army. With my God, I can scale any wall. God's way is perfect, and all the Lord's promises prove true. He is a shield for all who look to him for protection. He is a shield to all of those who look to him for protection. Father, we thank you for this time that we've had with you. Holy Spirit, I pray in the name of Jesus, be with each and every one of us. Unction us. Illuminate in our lives what we need to learn and what we need to see. Help us, Father, to discard the things that we need to get rid of. And fill us with more of you and less of me. We pray that in Jesus' name. And we all said, Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful week.